Playing with Power MTG. Powerful cards, powerful formats. Did you know that we have a podcast? The Playing With Power podcast talks about CEDH, set reviews, tips and tricks to level up your CEDH game, and so much more. Check out the Playing With Power podcast on your favorite podcast aggregator and on YouTube. To get the latest updates on Playing With Power, be sure to check out our social media. Follow us on Twitter, check us out on Facebook, and find us on TikTok. Now, let's start out by showcasing our fighters this evening. First, we have Catherine piloting the partner pair of Rograx Son of Roga and Silas Wren, Seeker Adept. This is a turbo ad nauseum list that uses Rograk to turn on fast mana and free protection for a quick lethal win. Catherine's opening hand contains a Mnemonic Betrayal, Mox Amber, Time Twister, Vampiric Tutor, Mana Vault, Underground Sea, and a Watery Grave. Next we have Daquan, piloting the partner pair of Timna the Weaver and Thrasios Triton Hero. This list, known as Razakath's, looks to control the game, gain advantage to its commanders, and cheat out Razakath for the win. Daquan's opening hand contains an Animate Dead, Reanimate, Mystic Remora, Entomb, Force of Negation, Marsh Flats, and his London Mulligan is a life and death. After that we have Alan Paladin Rocco Cabaretti Caterer. This deck uses its commander to search up Arena Rector and sacrifice it to find Vivian on the hunt and assemble a Kiki Jiki combat win. Alan's opening hand contains a Birds of Paradise, Mox Diamond, Lightning Bolt, Wooded Foothills, Scalding Tarn, Ancient Tomb, and his London Mulligan is a Noxious Revival. Finally, we have Zack, piloting the partner pair of Timna the Weaver and Krom, Ludovic's Opus. This deck, known as Blue Farm, gains card advantage through its commanders and wins with concise win packages including Underworld Breach and Thassa's Oracle. Zack's opening hand contains a Krom Mox, Mystic Remora, Dranath Magistrate, Mental Misstep, Watery Grave, and his London Mulligans are Wheel of Fortune and Force of Negation. If you like this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell. Without further ado, let's kick off this absurd aggregation of aggressive archetypes. Catherine brought the most outlandish socks to the table and gets to start us off. Catherine draws and plays an underground sea. She casts a Mox Amber. She casts her commander, Rograx, son of Rogah. She casts a Mana Vault. She casts a turn one, Time Twister. In response, Daquan casts Force of Negation for its alternate cost, exiling Mystic Remora. Twister is countered and exiled, and the turn moves to Daquan. Daquan draws and plays a Marsh Flats. Shedding a single tear for his Mystic Remora, Daquan gives the turn to Alan. Alan draws and plays an Ancient Tomb. He taps it to cast Grim Monolith. He casts a Mox Diamond, discarding Wooded Foothills. He casts a Birds of Paradise. In response, Daquan cracks his Marsh Flats, pays a life, and fetches up an Underground Sea onto the battlefield. Birds resolves, and Alan passes the turn. Zack draws and plays a Watery Grave into play Untapped, paying two life. He casts a Mystic Remora. In response, Daquan casts an Entomb, fetching up a Villas Broker of Blood into his graveyard. Remora resolves, and Zack follows it up by casting a Chrome Mox and printing Mental Misstep. He ships the turn to Catherine. During Catherine's draw step, she takes a damage from her Mana Vault. She plays a Watery Grave into play Untapped, paying 2 life. She casts a Vampiric Tutor. Remora triggers, and Zack draws. Then Catherine fetches up a card onto the top of her library and loses 2 life. She gives the turn to Daquan. Daquan draws and plays a Flooded Strand. He casts Reanimate, targeting Villas. Remora triggers, and Zack draws. In response, Zack casts Swan Song. In response, Daquan cracks his Flooded Strand, pays a life, and fetches up a Tropical Island onto the battlefield. He casts Veil of Summer. Remora triggers, and Zack draws again. Veil resolves and Daquan draws. Swan Song fizzles and Reanimate resolves. Villas returns to the battlefield and Daquan loses 8 life. Villas triggers and Daquan draws 8 cards. With nothing else, Daquan passes, discarding to hand size. Alan draws and plays a Scalding Tarn. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Taiga onto the battlefield. He taps his Ancient Tomb to cast his commander, Rocco, Cabaretti Caterer, where X equals 2. Rocco enters and he fetches up a Dockside Extortionist onto the battlefield. Dockside enters and Alan creates 4 treasures. All set, he gives the turn to Zack. During Zack's upkeep, he pays for his Mystic Remora. He draws and casts a Mox Opal. He plays a Spire of Industry as his land for turn. He taps it to help cast Dranath Magistrate. Dranath resolves, and Zack ships the turn to Catherine. During Catherine's draw step, she takes a damage from her Mana Vault. She plays a Forbidden Orchard as her land for turn. She passes. Daquan draws and plays a Verdant Catacombs. He cracks it and pays a life. Villas triggers, and Daquan draws a card. Then he fetches up a Bayou onto the battlefield. He casts a Soul Ring. Remora triggers, and Zack draws. Daquan passes. Alan draws and casts Lightning Bolt, targeting Dranath. Remora triggers, and Zack draws. Dranath dies, and he follows it up with a Food Chain. Remora triggers, and Zack draws again. Food Chain resolves, and Alan floats a red and exiles his Birds of Paradise to Food Chain, adding two green. He exiles Rocco to Food Chain, adding four red, putting Rocco into the command zone. He exiles Dockside for three white. He recasts his commander, Rocco, where X equals three. In response, and with a delightfully wretched grin, Daquan flashes in, an opposition agent. Agent resolves, Rocco enters, and Daquan searches Alan's library and exiles a Skyclave apparition. Dismayed, Alan gives the turn to Zack. During Zack's upkeep, he pays to keep his remora. He draws and plays an underground sea. He casts a Lotus Petal. He casts his commander, Timna the Weaver. He passes the turn. During her draw step, Catherine takes a damage from her Mana Vault. She plays a Luxury Suite and ships the turn to Daquan. 
Daquan draws and plays a Bloodstained Mire. He cracks it and pays a life. Villas triggers and Daquan draws. He then fetches up a Scrubland onto the battlefield. He casts Survival of the Fittest. Remora triggers and Zack draws. In response, Zack casts Fierce Guardianship for its alternate cost, countering Survival. Next, Daquan casts a Dranath Magistrate. He moves to combat and attacks Catherine with Villas. In response, Catherine taps Forbidden Orchard, giving Jay a spirit to cast Ad Nauseam. Remora triggers and Jay draws. In response, Daquan activates Villas, paying two life, drawing two cards, killing Rograk. He activates Villas, paying two life, drawing two cards, killing Rocco. In response, Zack casts Forza Will, paying a life, exiling a blue card, countering Ad Nauseam. Then Catherine takes the damage from Villas, and with nothing else, Daquan passes, discarding to hand size. Alan draws, takes no actions, and passes. During Zack's upkeep, he pays to keep his Remora. He draws and moves the combat, swinging Timna at Alan and the Spirit Token at Catherine. They each take it, and Zack gains two life. In his second main phase, Timna triggers, and Zack pays two life and draws two cards. He plays a Misty Rainforest for turn. He cracks it, paying a life. It is at this point that Daquan smiles again, and points out the opposition agent. He exiles a Tundra, looking at Zack's hand as well. Sorrowfully, Zack ships the turn to Catherine. During her draw step, Catherine takes a damage from her Mana Vault. With nothing else to do, she gives the turn to Daquan. During Daquan's upkeep, Zack casts Silence, locking out opponents from casting spells this turn. Daquan draws and plays a Scalding Tarn. He moves straight to combat, attacking Zack with Villas for his transgressions. Zack takes eight, and Daquan passes the turn. Alan draws, plays a Plateau, and passes. At the end of Alan's turn, Daquan cracks his Scalding Tarn, paying a life. Villas triggers and Daquan draws. He fetches up a Watery Grave into play untapped, paying two life. Villas triggers again, and Daquan draws two. The turn moves to Zack. During Zack's upkeep, he lets his Remora die. He draws and moves to combat. In response, Daquan pays two life to activate Villas, targeting Zack's spirit. Villas triggers and Daquan draws two. The spirit dies, and Zack attacks Catherine with Temna. She takes it, and Zack gains two life. In his second main phase, he pays a life and draws a card through Temna. He casts a Mox Diamond, discarding Marsh Flats. He gives the turn to Catherine. During his upkeep, Catherine pays four to untap her Mana Vault. She draws and plays a Polluted Delta. She passes. At the end of Catherine's turn, Daquan casts Vampiric Tutor. He fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. Villas triggers, and Daquan draws two. The turn moves to Daquan. During his upkeep, Daquan casts Silence. Silence resolves, shutting out opponents from casting spells this turn. He draws and casts Lion's Eye Diamond. He plays Zack's Tundra as his land for turn. He casts a Mana Crypt. He casts Ariok Salvagers. He cracks his LED, discarding his hand, adding three white. He activates Ariok Salvagers, returning LED to his hand. Daquan presents a loop of sacrificing and returning LED through Ariok Salvagers to generate infinite mana of every color. He casts his commander, Thrasios, Triton Hero. He activates Thrasios, drawing his library, putting all lands onto the battlefield tapped. He casts Thassa's Oracle. It enters, triggers, and Daquan wins the game. The team had a lot of fun, so they decided to go again. In this game, we have Alan, Piloting Corvold, Fake Cursed King. This deck, known as Treasure Storm, seeks to resolve a Dockside, draw cards through Corvold, and dig for the win. Alan's opening hand contains a Worldly Tutor, Tender Wall, Viscera Seer, Assassin's Trophy, Chrome Mox, Undergrowth Stadium, and a City of Brass. Next, we have Jay, piloting the partner pair of Timna the Weaver and Krom Ludovic's Opus. His opening hand contains a Swan Song, Fierce Guardianship, Lion's Eye Diamond, Mox Diamond, Dockside Extortionist, Bloodstained Mire, and Averted Catacombs. After that, we have Travis, piloting the partner pair of Rograk, Son of Rogah, and Thrasios, Striking Hero. This deck, called Poly Tyrant, looks to polymorph Rograk into Hullbreaker Horror or Tide Spout Tyrant, generate infinite mana, and piece together a win. Travis opening hand contains a Lotus Petal, Soul Ring, Trading Grounds, Windswept Heath, Command Tower, Mana Confluence, and his Lona Mulligan is the Turn the Earth. Finally, we have Kevin, piloting Kinnon, Bonder Prodigy. This deck, called House of Mirrors, seeks to gain mana advantage through its commander, eventually gaining infinite mana and winning through commander activations. Kevin's opening hand contains a Mental Misstep, Mox Diamond, Lotus Petal, Arcane Signet, Forest, Island, and his Lona Mulligan is a Noxious Revival. And Alan gets to start us off. Alan draws and plays a City of Brass. He casts a Chrome Mox and printing Assassin's Trophy. He taps the City of Brass to cast a Tender Wall. All set up, he passes the turn. Jay draws and plays a Bloodstained Mire. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. He casts a Mox Diamond, discarding Verdant Catacombs. He ships the turn to Travis. Travis draws and plays a Command Tower. He casts his Commander, Rograk, Son of Rogah. He casts a Soul Ring. He casts a Lotus Petal. He gives the turn to Kevin. Kevin draws and plays an island. He casts a Mox Diamond, discarding a forest. He casts an Arcane Signet. He casts a Lotus Petal. He pays two life to cast a Taxi and Probe, targeting Jay. He looks at Jay's hand and draws a card. He passes. At the end of Kevin's turn, Alan casts a Worldly Tutor. In response, Jay casts Swan Song. Tutor is countered, and Alan creates a 2-2 bird. The turn moves to Alan. Alan draws and plays an Undergrowth Stadium. He sacrifices his Tender Wall, adding two red. He taps his City of Brass to help cast his commander, Corvold, Fake Curse King. Corvold enters, Alan sacrifices his bird, Corvold triggers, gets a counter, and Alan draws. He passes the turn. J 
Jay draws and plays an exotic orchard. He casts Dockside Extortionist. It enters and Jay creates six treasures. He casts his commander, Krom, Ludovic's Opus. He moves to Krom Bat and attacks Travis with Krom. Travis takes it and Jay ships the turn. Travis draws and plays a Mana Confluence. He taps it to help cast his commander, Thrasios, Triton Hero. He casts a Training Grounds. Krom triggers and Jay draws. In response, Kevin pays two life to cast Mental Misstep, countering Training Grounds. Jay passes the turn to Kevin. Kevin draws and plays a Misty Rainforest. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a tropical island onto the battlefield. He casts his commander, Kennen, Bonder Prodigy. He casts a Mystic Remora. Krom triggers and Jay draws. Remora resolves and Kevin ends his turn. Alan draws and plays a Spire Garden. He casts a Dark Confidant. He passes to Jay. Jay draws and plays a Spire of Industry. He taps it to help cast his commander, Timna the Weaver. He moves to combat and attacks Travis with Krom and Kevin with Dockside. He holds priority and casts Swords to Plowshares, targeting Kennen. Kennen is exiled and Kevin gains two life. Then they both take it and in his second main phase, Jay pays two and draws two through Timna. Feeling good, Jay ends his turn. Travis draws and plays a Windswept Teeth. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a tropical island onto the battlefield. With nothing else, he ships the turn to Kevin. During his upkeep, Kevin pays to keep his Remora. He draws and cracks his Lotus Petal to help recast his commander, Kennen. Kevin passes. During his upkeep, Alan reveals a Demonic Tutor through Dark Confidant. He draws and casts Diabolic Intent, sacrificing Dark Confidant as an additional cost. Corval triggers, gets a counter, and Alan draws a card. He fetches up a card into his hand. He taps the City of Brass to cast Dockside Extortionist. Krom triggers, and Jay draws. Dockside enters, and in response, Travis taps his Mana Confluence to cast Chain of Vapor, targeting Corvold. Remora triggers, and Kevin draws. Corvold bounces, and Alan doesn't continue the chain. Dockside enters, and Alan creates seven treasures. He casts Demonic Tutor. Mystic triggers, and Kevin draws. Alan fetches up a card into his hand, and then gives the turn to Jay. Jay draws and moves to combat. He attacks Alan with Krom, Kevin with Timna, and Travis with Dockside. Travis blocks with Thrasios, they all take the rest, and then Jay gains two life. In his second main phase, he pays two life and draws two cards through Timna. He plays a Morphic Pool for turn. He casts Mnemonic Betrayal. In response, Travis activates Thrasios, scrying one and revealing a gamble into his hand. In response, Alan casts Ad Nauseam. Remora triggers and Kevin draws. In response, Jay casts Miscast and Kevin draws again. With nothing else, Ad Nauseam is countered and Mnemonic Betrayal resolves. Each opponent then exiles their graveyards. Jay exiles Simeon Spirit Guide from his hand, adding a red. He casts Demonic Tutor from Exile. Remora triggers and Kevin draws. He fetches up a card into his hand. He casts Underworld Breach and Kevin draws from Remora. He casts Lion's Eye Diamond and Kevin draws again. He cracks his LED, discards his hand, and adds three blue. He escapes Brain Freeze with all copies targeting himself, milling some of his library. He escapes Chain of Vapor, targeting his Dockside. Remora triggers and Kevin draws. Dockside bounces and he doesn't continue the chain. He escapes LED and Kevin draws again. He cracks it for three red. He escapes Dockside Extortionist. It enters and Jay creates five treasures. He escapes Brain Freeze and Kevin draws. He mills more of his library. He escapes Chain of Vapor, bouncing Dockside and Kevin draws through Remora. He casts Dockside, creating five treasures. He escapes Grand Abolisher. It resolves, locking out opponents this turn. Jay casts Chain of Vapor from Exile, bouncing Dockside. He recasts Dockside, creating five more treasures. He presents a loop of escaping LED, cracking it for blue, then escaping Brain Freeze, milling out his opponents. He passes, sacrificing Underworld Breach. One by one, each opponent attempts to draw from an empty library, loses, and Jay wins the game. Ladies and gentlemen, what a fun pair of games tonight. Congrats to Daquan and Jay on their wins. In game one, Daquan kept the table under check with Villas, preventing anyone from accruing too much value. He then bled them dry of interaction, presenting wins until he could do so himself. In game two, Jay was able to interact at key moments, then used his opportunity to go for the win. He used Mnemonic Betrayal to find key pieces to assemble his combo and close out the game. The most valuable card in tonight's game, sponsored by Luxury Playstyle, goes to Villas, Broker of Blood. Daquan showed just how oppressive this demon can be once it hits the table. The moment you reanimate it and being able to draw 8 cards immediately puts you in such a commanding position. Daquan then made sure the table couldn't do anything else until he was able to win. Well that about wraps it up for this episode. Tune in next time and we duke it out to see who will be king of the competitive EDH table. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time.